guys, Rick here from Neutrophilto, and in this review video, um, we're going to have a look at the Dazine or Dazine Cody Professional TTL Flash Trigger. Um, this kit's for Canon, they are coming out with a Nikon or Nikon, however you say that soon. Um, and this has been kindly sent through to us by David Selby uh, from LightingRumors.com. So thank you very much, uh, Dazine, and also David from Lighting Rumors. So we'll have a quick look at this kit now, see what we get in the box, and have a look at the build quality. And then in the second part of the review, we'll have a look at the features and functionality of these TTL flash triggers. Okay, so let's have a quick look and see what we have in the package um, for the Daisy and Cody Professional TTL flash triggers. Like I say, this is the Canon set. So we'll just remove that box out of the way. It's um, very, very nicely packaged, I do have to say. Um, so, excellent job there, Daisy or Dazin. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Um, very, very nicely packaged. The box isn't too big, it's not wasteful. Very, very nicely presented. Okay, so we'll quickly take this out. Throw for all the wrapping noise. Uh, we have a manual, okay, which um, we'll have a look at that a little bit later on. It's well presented, um, multiple languages, and it's in a kind of a folding map um, layout rather than a you know traditional booklet. So that's the manual. Uh, the manual, one of those things that we very rarely read, maybe we should. Right. Now let's take this out. See where with that. Now this little bag's awesome. I mean you could use this thing as a travel day bag um, for holding toothpaste and stuff. It's just you know it's great. It holds my Foltic Stratol 2 triggers very, very nicely. And the you know the complete set including the spares. Um, very very nicely made bag, very very nicely presented. It does have the manufacturer name, Dazine or Dazine there, on the front as well. Okay, so let's open this up. And here we have inside uh, the contents of the bag. Now, this may be a little difficult to see some things because obviously all the items are black and the inside's black. And one thing, camera bag manufacturers and bag makers or little pouch makers I'd love it if they made these things a lighter grey colour or even a brighter colour so it's easy to see the black items when you're trying to find things. That said, let's carry on. You have a front netting pouch here which holds a USB cable. There. Okay. Now that is for um, updating the firmware on these triggers which is nice. So for future feature sets, functions, maybe upgrades that camera uh, manufacturers make to their lighting lighting setups they can add features as they go so it should provide a prolonged life to these trigger sets being able to upgrade them or maybe may make minor upgrades to um, fix slight problems if they are we have a couple of um, sync cables you got the mini foam port there and also the larger um, jack as well for using with studio strobes so that's quite nice there uh, Okay, now we do have lanyards. Um, one's already attached, so that's quite handy if you want to just hook it onto your light stand or any kind of um, apparatus that you're using. Now, this little foot here is for the trigger, and it's nice that you can actually have these things separate because if your light stand goes down, oops, many of you may well know that the foot of your wireless trigger or receiver is the first thing to break because of all the leverage on it, you've got the weight of the light and it's the first thing to go. So if everything else survives, this thing generally will break. That said, with it being separate, it may be prone to be being lost. So it's a metal thread there, metal thread there, with a thumb screw and a rubber top for gripping as you tighten, which is quite nice. And that is for the receiver. Now I have a lanyard attached to this receiver, okay, already, as we can see. Um, and it simply would screw into the base of that. Should you wish to attach it um, to a traditional umbrella bracket or maybe put a spigot in the bottom of there. Um, but you can of course, using the standard one quart thread, attach a spigot to the actual trigger directly um, as well. Okay, now the trigger, um, it is a separate trigger, it's not a transceiver, um, like you would find with the Yunyu C622Cs. Um, the ETL triggers. This is a Canon set, and by the way, this is a this belongs to a friend of mine. I will do a quick comparison between these two, 
in terms of the feature sets um, shortly. So we'll take that out. Okay, now just quickly to have a quick look at the trigger. Um, it does have a blanking plate there um, to protect the contacts on the hot shoe. And like I say, these are fully compatible TTL triggers. You have a PC sync, a mini phone, and a remote shutter release, so you could um, use these things to trigger your camera should you wish. Many, many triggers these days allow you to control your camera uh, remotely as well and come with the relevant cables um, to do so. And if we have a look at this side, we can see the mini USB port there. Now, one thing to note, the build quality on these things, the bag the bag's really nice, or the case, the build quality is rock solid. Okay, um, it feels really solid, it doesn't flex when you press it or anything like that. It should take quite a bit of punishment. I do wish that they, the markings here, um, like for the groups, the USB port, and on the other side as well for the channel's power, were a different colour. It's black on black, it's hard to see. Um, it's like the inside of camera bags when they're dark, it's hard to see black components and little adapters and brackets. Okay, so that's your mini USB port for, port for firmware updates. You have your groups A, B, C and D, so it is group compatible. Um, this little panel here is rubber, so it's nice for grip, it's not all smooth. Okay, you've got the hot shoe there on top, the test button with the power and the activity light. On the other side, we have the traditional older style sync port. Okay, if you're using it with studio strobes, maybe something like Alien Bees, um, Bowen's Heads, or what have you, whatever you have access to in a studio. Then you have the auto channel. It does have multiple channels, more than three, two, and one. Auto, it will cycle through other channels and select the best channel to use based on the environment that it's in. That it's in. Many triggers are doing that these days, providing you better security when working in noisy environments or working with other shooters in the same area. And you have the um, power button on and off there. The quite a positive action on these buttons as well. So they're quite a solid press. I can't really see these things being accidentally switched on or changed. Like what happens on some triggers, my Photic Strato 2s, I'm sometimes finding when I go to the bag they've switched themselves on because they've moved around a little bit. And then you end up with flat batteries. Okay, so it's battery wise, it comes very well packaged by the way with silica packs, handy. Okay, they use double A's to power, two in the trigger there. Uh, the battery panel or cover is fairly solid, you know, fairly standard. It's usually a weak point on these things and will probably loosen um, over time, but it seems okay and fairly solid. So we'll just stick that to one side up there. Okay. Now, oops, what else do we have? Now this is the commander or the transmitter. Now I'm just going to shift this bag over to one side for a moment so we can have a good look at this. It's got a lanyard attached, okay, and it has a hot shoe on the top of it, which I find kind of funny because the problem with this is, and I'll show this in a further part of the video, is imagine if you want to use on-axis fill with a flash on top of your camera then it sits quite high because this thing is fairly deep. Um, now your AF assist beams, certainly on my um, cameras, my 60D, my 5D Mark II, and my 430 EX2 flashes, the AF assist beam does still work, although you do start to lose some coverage on that AF assist beam because the flash is now raised um, higher than it would be normally on the camera. Okay, now you have again a blanking plate there, a very solid little trigger unit um, with a LCD screen which does light up. I'm not going to power it up now, we don't have batteries in. Uh, we'll do that on the next part when I can um, connect it to a camera so we can have a look at the feature sets. We have a metal hot shoe which is nice with a thumb screw which is easy to tighten because the unit's not too wide. The Katus V5s were a pain in the ass for that. Okay, we have a battery compartment with two double A's. So again, very very common battery pack and only two of them which is nice. Um, and we have good positive clicks here on the LCD, on the control panel here um, to change the settings, groups, functions, ETTL, manual and so forth as well. Now on the side of this we also have a oops, here we go, rubber panel with a sync port connector and a mini USB again for firmware updates so do we wish to um, apply any. Okay. Like I, like I say, a very, very solid little unit 
with a good positive power button there which is recessed so it's hard to knock and switch on accidentally um, which you can do with some triggers so a very very solid little build unit and I like the fact that it has this flat panel here if you if you wanted to you can stick a little quippy mark on there or a smiley face if you want maybe to get some a reaction out of people that you're photographing daft idea maybe I don't know you might want to do that so very very good very very well packaged solid build quality I mean it's rock solid this thing and um, overall I'm very very impressed with the feel the build quality and the packaging so what we'll do in part two we'll fire this thing up and connect it to a camera and a flash and we'll have a look at the features and functions and we'll compare them to the Young Yu YN622Cs um, as well for that so this is more of an unboxing but so far very impressed with the build quality nicely packaged well put together and uh, it should be fun having a look and see what these things can do